Chef Lynn. Welcome to the Flavor Secrets Cooking Show. Today we're at Mitchell's Fish Market in Birmingham, Michigan, and we're going to learn some really cool dishes today. But first, let me introduce you to the general manager of Mitchell's Fish Market, Josh Brennan. Hey, Hello. Josh. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Excellent. Can you tell me a little bit about what makes Mitchell's special and what's your philosophy for this restaurant? Absolutely. Well, um, to start off with, first thing, uh, our lunch can be a nice casual lunch. It can be relaxed at your leisure. We can also do a great, um, if you need to be quick and then out, get back to work, we can be a great spot for that as well for lunchtime. Oh, that's really a good thing to know because sometimes it is necessary, even when you're just shopping, to have something quick. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we also, um, Moving in past that, when you come in for our lunchtime, we do have our um, seasonal promotions and our chef features that we are um, very proud of. Every season, we do one for spring, summer, winter, and fall, and they coincide with seasonal vegetables that are only available for a limited time. And we um, we're very happy to offer a lot of great um, chef and, um, chef dishes for. Oh, that's for really those. cool. So, do you have certain relationships with special Michigan farmers? Do you try to buy Michigan product, or when, when at all possible, we do absolutely. Um, okay. And we want to just try to take advantage of what's local and what's um, you know best available at that time of the season. Okay, super. Yeah. And you're also part of the Landry Select program, right? Yes. So you um, can get points and earn cool things. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. It's, uh, it's actually um, our rewards program that we have, and for every $250 you spend with us, you get $200 or uh, $25 right back and a uh, free $25 every year for the month of your birthday as well. So it's um, great for all of our loyal guests that dine with us quite frequently to take advantage of. Oh my goodness, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and you also have private dining? We do. We have our private dining room, um, which is great for anything from birthdays, um, birthday and anniversary celebrations, can be great for corporate luncheons, corporate dinners, along with um, presentations as well. Um, whatever the event is, is, um, our private dining room can be a great spot to hold here on your special event. So how many people can you accommodate there? We can accommodate up to 32 in our private dining 32? room. 32? Oh, it doesn't yeah. look that big. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and you have a television in there so you can do presentations? Absolutely. State-of-the-art. We have the television. We have um, screen if, the, if there's a projector. Um, we're ready to go, whatever the guest needs. Okay, great. Anything else? Um, other than that, we actually do have our um, fish case as well, which you can see right over there. Mm -hmm. And we have all of our fish that's flown in fresh daily, lots of great species to choose from. And um, we always try to bring in what's available from season to season, and we're uh, always happy to feature that in the fish mm -hmm. case as well. Um, guests can walk right in, take a look at the fish case, and decide to take home a piece of fish. Um, take a oh, piece so you of can fish also home. buy it to take home if Absolutely. you want to cook it if you yourself. wish to do the cooking yourself, you're more than welcome to take it with you. Okay, well, I know you have probably the biggest selection of any fish restaurant that I know of in this area, right? Absolutely. Because I know you always have six or seven different wonderful fish choices, mm -hmm. but you also have other kinds of food if you don't like fish. Absolutely, there's, yes. There's we something have, to eat. We have great chicken dishes. We have a variety of different steak options as well. Uh, we have our uh, vegetarian dishes that we can always prepare upon request, and we also feature our gluten-free menu too. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's go over and take a look and see what Chef Craig has for us today. Sounds great. I'm pleased to introduce you to Chef Craig Hilliker, the executive chef for Fit Mitchell's Fish Market. Craig, what are you going to uh, make for us today? Welcome. Uh, well, today we're going to start off with our cedar salmon. Uh, this happens to be one of our most uh, ordered dishes. So everybody really seems to like it. It's a great dish, something that you can actually easily prepare at home. So simply, first thing I want to make sure everybody knows is start out with fresh fish. That's the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. okay? And where do you get your fish? Because I understand you have some really special fish. Uh, we get ours from the ocean. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> uh, all over, all over. To be honest with you, we've got uh, we've got Great Lake fish. We've got uh, Atlantic, all flown in fresh. Pacific. It's yeah, all fresh. All fresh. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off uh, right here. We've got a piece of salmon. I also have a cedar board that I've soaked in a little bit of water. Uh, what that does is, is essentially if you were making a campfire uh, with wet wood, what does it do? It smokes, right? Right. So you get a lot of that smoky flavor, it makes your campfire awful, right? So that's what we want for our salmon, but it's going to make our salmon delicious. Can right? you do this on a campfire? Um, very carefully. Very carefully, right. Very you carefully. might catch your cedar right. on, on fire. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to season it up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, I got my... Uh, you have a special kind of salt there? No, nope. just kosher just salt and a little bit of uh, black pepper, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop this into the oven. Those were mixed together. The yep. black pepper's mixed in here. Yeah. So we're going to pop that into the oven for a minute and kind of let that uh, start to kind of smolder and smoke. You're going to get a lot of that imparted smoke flavor. From so that. your oven's at 400? Uh, roughly, yeah. I mean, if you're doing this at home, I would say, you know, 4 450 would be fine. Okay. It's going to take about five to eight minutes, give or take. So 
From there, uh, we're gonna move into our vegetables. So right here, I've already got some uh, some cut zucchini and basically just fresh again. That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing that I can teach you guys anything. So cut on a little bit of an angle. Cut on right? a little bit of a bias. Make them I got a, uh, a red pepper and a yellow pepper. So oh. we're just gonna season that up. A little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of uh, olive oil, and a little bit of parsley. Okay. Flat leaf parsley. What's that? Flat leaf parsley. Just uh, chopped yes. up. Yep. Corks. Just chopped up. Nice. So we make that into there, and then go ahead and just. Grill these off. Yeah, nice hot grill. Yeah. Mm, yummy. Now, if you don't have a hot grill, don't even bother because uh, essentially you're just going to ruin your, your dishes. So, okay. That's that. All right, All right, so back in the kitchen, are you doing tons of these at a, at a time yes. and warming so them up or are you do doing these we, individually? We'll go ahead and we'll get these prepped up and we'll get the grill marks on them, get them we'll par cook them, is what we call it, uh, and then we'll stage them up. And then okay. that way, when, when uh, the guest orders it, we just fire it up to order. So it can come and, out quickly. Yep. Right. Okay. All right. So from here, uh, we're going to make a topping. All right. So we put a sun dried tomato pesto on there. Uh, we start off with a little bit of uh, sun dried tomatoes, just coarsely chopped. Uh, a little That's about bit, a half a cup. Uh, yeah, roughly. Roughly. Okay. Uh, a little bit just of. Just trying to uh, keep you honest here. <laughs> well, the beautiful thing about this is, uh, is you can do. You can put whatever you'd like into it. It's just cooking. Now, if we were baking, it would be a different story, right? Mm -hmm. But since we're cooking, you can make it up as you go along. Okay. All right, so a little bit of uh, red wine vinegar, a little bit of fresh scallions. A couple uh, tablespoons, cut yep. on an angle. Yep. I, I'm always harping about that. Cut them on an angle. Olive oil, a bit of about olive two. oil. And then uh, shallot, about one tablespoon. Okay. And of course, a little bit of salt. And more salt. All right, so we're just going to mix this up. What if somebody wants salt free? Can you do that? Salt, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Doesn't salt. taste as good though, right? I, I'd miss my salt. That's how I feel. <laughs> All right, so our vegetables are looking great. We're gonna flip these yep. over. You know, talk about why you flipped them the way you did, because you got the marks just perfect there. Well, uh, they're, they're, they're diamond marks. So essentially you grill them out of 45 degree angle and then you flip them the other way. And exactly, another 45 degree angle. Cross diamond mark, cross ash marks. So from here, uh, we are gonna go ahead and just throw a little bit of uh, butter in our pan. About a, two tablespoons of butter there? Yeah, yeah give or take. Yeah, it's about, about two tablespoons. All right, we got that mm -hmm. going. This is still the sauce? No, Same this, sauce? so we've already made our pesto. So that's, we're gonna keep that on the side. Okay, uh, so that's gonna, finished. Yep, that's finished. So now we're gonna start on our asparagus. Um, this is going to be for kind of like our side dish for the seed or something. Okay. Um, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop these in here. Got the do you care butter. if they're big, if they're fat asparagus, or if they should be small? What's that? Should they be tiny asparagus, or all preference? Do you look all specifically preference. for? Uh, these are about the size that we typically try to go with. They're mm -hmm. uh, on the larger side. Okay. So, um, you know, in your grocery store, you're gonna get a little bit smaller ones. You know, asparagus is a wild animal. I mean, <laughs> That's right. So you're gonna get big ones. You're gonna get small ones. You're gonna okay. get, you know, whatever is out there. So a little so bit of salt and pepper. It's a myth that those small ones are more tender. I. I I mean, they are a little bit, but, I, but if you have the small me. ones, don't cook them quite as long. Right. Okay. All right. So we got that going. We're gonna kill that. And you Next. turned it down or up? Uh, I turned it off. Turned it off. Okay. Just making sure. But we did. All right. So we got a little cedar board here. This is all for just your plate presentation, more so than anything else. So this one is not soaked because it Correct. goes on, but the one you baked in was yep. soaked. Because with water, like I said, that does is that just allows that smokiness to come out of the cedar mm -hmm. board. But you soaked it why? So it won't uh, that, burn. Because that's what helps it smoke. Okay, so and also so it won't burn, it. right? Right. So. You ever had it burn up on the oh, grill? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> then they're done that? Yeah. That's pretty. All right, so we got this. So I like the way you chose the different colors. Yeah. It looks you like know, a garden just, salad to start it. It's got a great, uh, great visual appeal to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then if you ask anybody, of course, you eat it with your eyes first. Right. So that right there. I'm eating with my eyes right now. <laughs> it looks delicious. I'm hungry. All right. Our I'm always hungry. Cooked. Oh, yep. Fantastic. Looks good. One thing I have to say about Mitchell's is I have never, I've come here a lot and I have never had an overcooked piece of fish. It's fabulous. Never, ever. That's our goal. And I'm picky about my fish. All right. So we've already smoked our uh, salmon. It's got a little bit of that cedar uh, smoky flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Now we're just going to dress it up with a little bit of uh, balsamic glaze. So it's just kind of a sweet, sweet vinegar glaze is what you're putting on top of here. Right. Do you make that or do you, uh, is yes. that something that, yep, we do so you mix it. vinegar and a little bit of balsamic um, glaze? Actually, it's just balsamic vinegar reduced and then we just add a little bit of uh, sugar to it to kind of sweeten it up. Okay. Oh. 
Just a tiny, uh, tiny from, little bit of sugar. From here, we're going to add this delicious pesto that we made uh, about five minutes ago. Wow, this is a big meal. It's delicious. And then a little bit of goat cheese on top. And a little bit of parsley to garnish. Look at the colorful. That's a beautiful summer dish or winter dish or it, anytime. It, works, it just looks it works gorgeous. all the time. Wow. I'd be, I think anyone would be very happy to have that set well, in front of well, them. thank you. Okay, great. All right, well, I think we're going to take a minute and get set up for our next dish. All right, sounds good. We're back to take a look at a second dish from Mitchell's Fish Market. Um, but it, just as a little PS, I do want to tell you that they do have a full kitchen. Chef Craig doesn't always have to cook on these little burners. <laughs> but we're just doing this in a separate room so that it's easy to film. So what's your second dish? Uh, second dish is going to be our sea bash uh, prepared Shanghai style. Ooh. So uh, essentially you can do this with any fish that you'd like. Um, all it really is is just a uh, piece of fish of your choice uh, with a little bit of fresh ginger, salt, pepper, and then we steam it. So that way you don't get any other imparted cooking flavor. So uh -huh. like grilling, you get the grill flavor, broiling, broil flavor, you know. Cool. And get a spice this flavor. actually happens to be my favorite dish oh, here, good. so I don't know if you chose it because it's your favorite dish or my favorite dish or whatever. But well, it's anyway, one of our, our more popular dishes, really. Uh -huh. um, you know, everybody loves it. Everybody raves about it. So, and is there a particular kind of fish you like it best with? Uh, you know what? I think the sea bass is a great choice. Um, I is that also, what this is? Yep, the that's what bass? we're going to be preparing mm -hmm. today. Um, I also love tuna, um, and that's one of my favorite things. Um, the, the other cool thing about this dish is you can prepare it in several different ways. I'm going to show you the way that it's traditionally prepared here. Um, so we'll get started with that. Okay, great. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got sea bass, uh, as you can see right here. Gorgeous. Mm. Huh? Mm. No, no odor to it, so nope. it's, it's a fantastic piece of, uh, piece of fish. So again, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of that julienne fresh ginger. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not so easy. That's Somebody did a lot of work there, <laughs> peeling the ginger and then That's literally all you have it. to do for this step, and then all we're going to do is we're gonna pop it into our little steamer here. You know, this comes with a broth, though, doesn't it? This dish. Uh, it does. So we are gonna we're gonna walk through all that here in just one. Okay. Second. Getting ahead. So, all right, we got that going. Um, this is going to be what we call our ponzu sauce. So the ponzu sauce is a rice wine soy sauce. So just a really like a sweet soy sauce. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna I'm gonna give you a real quick overview on how to make this. Right? Okay. So uh, I have a little bit of mirin here, roughly about a half cup. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to reduce that by a third. Mirin okay? is a rice wine. Yep. It's a rice wine mainly used in cooking. So mm -hmm. you can find it in any grocery store. Correct. Any, All anyone. ethnic aisle. So we're gonna let that reduce for a second. Uh, so we're gonna let that go. Okay. okay. So we got our sea bass going. We got our sauce going. Next, uh, we're gonna talk about our side dishes that we use. So we we do ours with sesame spinach. So what we've done is we've pre-blanched some spinach. All we do is take the spinach, dunk it in a vat of boiling water, and then just. Right Take it right off water. as soon as it's yep. wilted. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's why it tastes so fresh. You don't cook overcook it. Correct. So that's what we have here. Uh, a little bit of sesame oil, and then this is our garnish of sesame seeds and scallions. So, all right. Sesame seeds and? Uh, scallions. Okay. So green onions. Mm -hmm. um, this is reduced. So what you do from here is just literally pull it off. We're going to set it right on over here. And then you're just going to add in uh, roughly about a tablespoon of soy sauce. I'd say two tablespoons. Give or take. Uh, give or, give take, or take, right. Doesn't matter. Uh, and then a little bit of crushed red pepper. Right. And when you're using soy sauce, you have to be a little bit careful with the salt, right? Because absolutely. soy sauce is already salty. Well, absolutely. And then if you see, I don't actually add any salt mm. to this. So this is where I stop. So okay. I'm going to let that go. It's got. Uh, it's going to marinate for a little bit, and it's going to sit, and it's going to develop that flavor. Okay. So it'll be fantastic. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and get our saute pan going. A little bit of that sesame oil that we talked about earlier. Mm, yum. This is regular sesame oil, not hot. Correct. Well, I mean, it, yeah. It's I made the regular. mistake of grabbing the hot once. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> so this will be, uh, we're going to heat this up really good. So that way we can go ahead and saute our spinach. Um, basically, that's all we do is saute our spinach in the uh, sesame oil, a little salt, pepper. So that would be pre broiled and pre boiled, excuse me, and portioned. What's back that? in the kitchen, the, the spinach, spinach? Yep. and then we, you just we blanch it ahead grab of time. one, and, yep. and then we just grab our orders, okay. and then we fire them as we need them. So, uh, sesame oil and a little bit of salt, pepper. We got that. All right. So while that's heating up, we're gonna go ahead and start moving on to our plating. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the base of this, I've already done some some sticky rice. 
Uh, sticky rice is just uh, short grain rice with the starch already rinsed off of it. So it gets really sticky. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's got a little bit of a sweet. So you're going to cook it with the sugar in it? Nope, it's already cooked. Okay. So what we do is we add a little bit of the, uh, the sweet vinegar to it after it's already cooked. Okay. So we got that. Press it into a little pyramid to yeah. make it pretty. Try to make it look pretty. All right, so this is getting nice and hot. Should be good. We're gonna go right it's around. Delicious. Like I said, this is a, a fan mm. favorite around here. I really love this one. This is a little bit di different presentation than I remember. Oh yeah. And I noticed how you've got these bowls that curve up on the sides so that you can put the broth in there. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, now we got our. The servers can carry it without. Losing it, have put all over the restaurant. Yeah, that helps out too. Well, I'm sure they like that. Oh, so that didn't steam very long at all. No, delicious. Got it nice it's and hot. Gorgeous. Yeah. And you know your fish is perfectly done when it flakes like that. Absolutely. That's good when that happens. Yeah, you don't want it to flake too much because then it might be overcooked. But sea bass, if you don't know anything about sea bass, you almost cannot overcook it. Seriously. Unless you burn it, you you almost cannot overcook it. Wow, because it's so thick. Um, just because it's, it's got a lot of uh, fatty acids in it, so it just, it just has a lot of uh, natural fat in it. So It's very hard to overcook it. So if you're a new fish cook, it'd be a good one to start with. <laughs> Alright, so we're garnishing it with a little bit of sesame seeds and, and a little bit of the fresh scallions. Scallions cut on an angle again. Yep, bias cut scallions. Mm -hmm. And there Beautiful. you have it. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, and you, you serve other things here besides fish, right? I know it's called Mitchell's Fish Market, Absolutely. but I want people to know that you, if you don't like fish, you can come here and get oh, other we, things. We have uh, all sorts of options, uh, vegetarian options, um, chicken dishes, steaks. Um, I mean, obviously we're known for our seafood, but we do it all. So, I mean, everything is great. Uh, several different kinds of, uh, of meat and steaks and all sorts of things. So. Fabulous, okay, well we need something to drink with this. So let's head over to the bar and talk to the bartender. Now we get to the fun part. As you can see, I'm in the bar at Mitchell's with bartender extraordinaire Brandon Spouts. And Brandon, um, I have a whole new respect for bartenders suddenly because I've already knocked over a glass. You cannot believe how small it is back here. I'm afraid to move and my, my hands are tied together. So, you want to tell us what's special about this bar? Um, I think the really unique thing about our bar is our happy hour. Um, we have all handcrafted cocktails. We don't really use um, mixes, anything like that. Um, our recipes that we use are phenomenal, um, along with, uh, we have one thing here, this is our happy hour calamari. Um, we have a really good happy hour uh, entree selection, everything from calamari to shrimp pot stickers to um, stuff like Bloody Mary oysters, and it's a really good value. All of our, the cost uh, is from? Uh, four to seven dollars for all of our uh, happy hour entrees, and then our drinks are anywhere from three to six. And you use all your own fresh juices, right? Yep, we, fresh squeeze, berries yep, and we squeeze all of our own juices, um, we cut all of our own fruit, um, like I said, we don't use any mixes. We have some purees that we use, but other than that, everything is fresh, ready to go. Awesome. Okay, and happy hour is what time? Uh, happy hour is going to be from 4 to 7. Uh, Every Sunday, day? Uh, Sunday through Monday. Or okay. so, forgive me, um, Sunday, th or, yeah, Sunday through uh, Friday. Uh, okay. We don't do happy hour on Saturday, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> Did you just finish yeah, happy hour? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, don't I wish. Um, <laughs> But no, the only day we don't run happy hour is Saturday, um, but okay. every other day it's 4 to 7. Um, Great, like and I, said, I know, every time I go by here it's crowded. Yeah, it's crazy. yeah, we get a really good happy hour crowd, it's a really good vibe, and uh, people seem to really enjoy um, everything we have to offer from our drinks to our uh, entrees. Good, so you're going to make us a couple drinks? Yes, um, the first thing I'm going to make is a Mitchell's Cosmo. This is one of our signature um, drinks. Um, the unique thing about our Mitchell's Cosmo is that we, um, we use a white cranberry juice. Uh, everybody's used to white cranberry in a Cosmo, so it's going to be a little bit less acidic. Um, hmm. So what I'll do here is, excuse me. Okay. All right. So we got some ice yeah. here. And we're gonna add a little ice in a shaker. Um, first thing we're gonna add is our new Amsterdam vodka. Um, it's a Amsterdam vodka. Very That's premium good. vodka. Okay. I've never heard of that. New Amsterdam is becoming a whole lot more um, popular. And for a um, for a call vodka, it's got a really good taste to it. So we have New Amsterdam vodka. Okay, a call vodka means um, call, uh, the the lowest end vodka you're gonna have is gonna be a well. We really don't serve well. Mm -hmm. um, 
Call Vodka is just a little bit of step up, so Call Vodka is going to have a name to it versus whereas you would think um, as a wall vodka is like a five o'clock or anything like that. That's the serve. moonshine in the back? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff we keep with the cooks. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but New Amsterdam is going to be a little bit higher up, not um, not to the uh, extent of like a Grey Goose or a Belvedere, um, but just a little bit below that. Okay. So we've got uh, New Amsterdam vodka. We're going to have um, a little bit of white cranberry juice. That's a great idea. Yeah. So, so why would it be less acidic to be white than red? Um, the white, I, I really don't know the, the basis behind it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I've tried a regular Cosmo and reg, red cranberry juice especially um, mm -hmm. tends to just, it has a little bit more acidity to it. I don't know mm -hmm. why. It could be just like grapes, you know, the acidity in the skin. Yeah, that, and we use a little bit of simple syrup, um, which I can actually add um, right now. Okay. Right. My simple. Actually, that's going to be a little bit of lemon juice. There we go. Here's my simple syrup. Mm, okay. It's looking good. Yeah. Smelling good. So we've got that. I think I'm missing anything. So we're going to go ahead and shake this. Oh, forgive me. My Cointreau. Can't Ooh. forget Cointreau. That's what makes it Cosmo. Do you know Cosmo. all these recipes by heart? I do, yes. It takes me a sec sometimes, but. We have, uh, I believe, 15 specialty cocktails, so wow. get a little mixed up sometimes. All right, here we go. Shake it up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and strain this. Immediately see the difference um, between that and what you would assume is a regular Cosmo. Right. And then we serve it. Do. With cocktail cranberries. Oh, gorgeous. They're actually really good to eat with the drink. They go really well. I together. bet, yeah. That's so that, great. That's our Mitchell's Cosmo. Okay. Um, next one I'm going to make here for you is uh, the Moscato White Sangria. Um, this is a drink that actually I recommend to my guests all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a unique thing that we do. Like I said, we don't use any mixes or anything like that. You see, you go to a lot of places, you get a sangria. Um, uh -huh. You're going to get uh, vodka, a little bit of wine, and a mix. Um, okay. So. That's what kind of makes ours a little bit unique. It's strawberries, um, I'm learning oranges here. This as is well. Not my specialty. Yeah. Okay, and you did uh, that just to open up a little. Just more to open it up. Um, the first thing that flavor. I add to it, um, we use uh, Sky Blood and Orange Vodka, which I'll add right now. Um, and basically, what what that's going to do is it'll allow the vodka will pull a little bit of the flavor from the fruit. Mm -hmm. So that'll get that in there as well. Mm -hmm. So we got Sky Blood and Orange Vodka here. here, forgive me. Okay. All right. A lot of ice there. Yeah, a lot of ice. <laughs> then we're gonna add just a little bit more simple syrup. Sweeten it up a little bit. And What's this one called again? again? This is our Moscato White Sangria. Okay. It's gorgeous. Right, grab a Moscato wine, forgive me. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes things aren't where yeah. they need to be, but that's all right. Yeah. We'll forgive you. Or else we'll start calling you your yeah. nickname. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, please no. <laughs> all right, and then it's going to be four ounces of uh, Moscato wine. Great. Then do you stir if, that? Uh, I do a little bit. But it usually it pretty much self blends. Uh -huh. So. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. We'll do that. Shake her up a little bit. I don't know how you move around back here without. It's it's a, it's an acquired <laughs> skill. And that is our. He was Moscato saying earlier, get three or four people back here, and it becomes yeah. quite challenging. Yeah, it gets a little fun, but after a while, you just you learn to duck and dive and okay. everything like that. So. Well, this looks to me like a great place to come to have a cocktail, especially during happy hour. And I, I understand that this bartender also does voices, so. Come on yeah. out and see if you can get him to do a few. I, I could I could do my Stewie for you. I, if you're a fan of Family Guy, come on in, and I'll be more than happy to pour you a drink and, and do a couple of voices All for right. you. So. Thanks a lot, Brandon. I'm Chef Lynn. Enjoy.